The badger stood on its hind legs, where only moments before had broken through from the soil floor for a purpose to bring a message to some stubborn animals, namely that of the hens and chickens and pigs. But so intrigued were the other animals that often overheard while they wandered in the area as the badger spoke, began to take an interest themselves. This badger, it seemed, caused a scene. Though how these onlookers celebrated or even mocked, or was simply inquisitive, rested on the character of that animal. And that in itself is the exciting nature of it all. For such diverse opinion means it speaks to all rather than a select few, which, however special one may be in a small group, the opposite effect can happen in the eventuality of that small group dying out before its time. A group of foxes of perhaps two or three began to circle curiously and only on account that they themselves thought the idea of badger preposterous. It was with a hurtful laughter that they began to show their true colours, echoing the same doubts as before, and no doubt hoping from a response by the badger. Though whether they really wanted to engage with him or merely belittle can never be known. For would they declare it to even themselves? They seemed to listen to their own salivating tongues that were also on display as much as their voices were. But would they air their own appreciation of their tongue or simply what was possible of their tongues? As Badger talked, more animals looked on. The birds on the branches ruffled their feathers, while some were divided on what to make of it all. Such diverse views from such a diverse population of birds within the public spectacle of sorts. Is spectacle an adequate word to describe what was going on? Perhaps we need to take a deeper journey than merely physical to be fair to our badger at all. Then if you have ears, let me start and bring some sense to all these rumours of such goings on as this. This badger, whose attention many were drawn to once again, spoke. Listen, my fellow animals, we need to change how we see ourselves to those that we call humans. There are many here such as the magpies that lure our brothers-in-law to their sacrificial doom with no knowledge of the gift of a new life that is promised to us by that farmer in our very distant past. You hens, listen. You chickens, listen. You pigs, listen. Your ancestors entered into a covenant with that farmer of old, many, many generations ago. There is a promise of being a pet, a promise of being adopted into the human family. These shall be no more tears for many, but for the many that will not believe, they will end up as continuous food for the humans. The pigs grunted in disgust. What is this? One pig snorted. Badger replied, Stop burying your heads in the ground. Turn back from your unbelieving ways. The birds perched and screeched, then reclaimed the sky, almost circling and flew low over the pigs and hens, then the scattering chickens. This badger, lies, you fools. We are to be sacrificed to our human betters. It is the prize we claim for our true destiny. We must die. Do you understand, you pigs? 
Whilst this was broadcast, Badger thought back some of the birds that began to attack him with falling bits of branches and twigs. And as the chaos began to unfold, the unsuspecting animals scattered back into the hidden surroundings, leaving a few to continue looking on, a bruised badger, retreating to where the birds could not get to him. And so it ceased. Back on the farm, a few of the elder hens and chickens commanded a meeting where all the chickens had to attend. The sole purpose to remove any such belief that was Badger had said was true. Many strutted about in fear, dishevelled. One elder considered, then spoke, we must contact the angels of a farmhouse to intervene for us. Those angels of yours are nothing but dogs, Lysine. Mere exalted brutes of the humans, protectors as well. I have seen them work for us on occasion. They are not all bad. Some can be trusted. We trust no one, for it is much safer this way. You will grow to understand this, I am sure, with time. Knowing that the meeting failed to convince everyone, they decided on stricter control. It was that time of devotion again. The pigs, the hens and the chickens came to accept. They seemed to take their part willingly. This was their last day for living. It was the tradition of laying down your life for the express delight of obeying the farmer. It was a challenge to accept the first time the young pigs, hens and chickens were gathered together and lectured to. It gripped them, it then frightened them. But what made it worse for the young ones was the older animals desiring this as the way it ought to be. They were certainly deeply scared why their own kind would want to encourage shuts unprofitable behaviour. What was wrong in simply living? The same response was given when they were most resistant. So they, the humans, may live. It was hard to get their little heads round. But as with much in life, if no option to do something different is presented, such inevitability to surrender to what is on offer is what is adhered to. And that no better way exists for a hen or chicken or pig to lay down their life so humans can live. But there was a side these younglings never became aware of, and this was that you could go down the route of being a pet of a farmer. A hidden haven where you did not need to give up your life. The scheming animals who stumbled upon this past truth, but wickedly turned on history and fabricated a different truth about the way it would be, were to blame. Though what happened to the voices that knew? Alas, they remained as silent as the bright moon. They appeared to shine as leaders, but did not. For the little pig that began its lonely, solitary walk to a place of execution was as normal as you or I might go down to the shops. It understood what that place meant. It was not a place of terror, but of a tearful honour. Honour by humans. I have said it was solitary. Though this meant the state of mind, for while the little pig took his final steps of his life, he was jeered on by the magpie swooping overhead. 
or even striding alongside him. Come on, little one, nearly there. All the little pig could do was move his eyes while looking straight ahead. Any meaning or expression had simply gone with each step. The farmer cuts. The farmer cats came spitting and hissing, then gently rubbing their heads on the little pig. At time, the little pig stopped so the cat could finish off with their acts of communication. The little pig had no need to turn round. It wouldn't have made a difference if it had. The place where he began his final journey was that of corners and shallow hills. If the little pig was encouraged to turn up the hill to the left, he would have been able to look out onto a vast expanse of land where a good many pigs could be seen. They had survived the sacrifice, though these were not necessarily good pigs, but those who convinced others to take place of them while they received a fuller life though not in the good sense of the word. So in the little pig went, a building so broad it gave a purposeful suggestion of significance. Back where the animals gathered, they heard one shot of a gun ring out. Those animals it heard simply bowed their heads and returned to life. But one thought on the words of the badger, and decided to seek him out because he did not like the way life was on the farm. <laughs>